we're gonna be counting down the top 50 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you cannot have. No, you cannot have them according to this very old Yu-Gi-Oh magazine. I got this magazine years ago when I was doing fan mail, still on my to-do list to you know, start back up um, at some point in the future, but this magazine lists 50 Yu-Gi-Oh cards that were expensive back in the day, and we're gonna find out how much they're worth now. And we're also gonna be looking through the whole thing, so let's just get started. First page. So much nostalgia. On the cover, Yu-Gi-Oh's Yu-Gi. It's hard being the king of games, but Yu-Gi always stands head and shoulders above the rest. Check out our previews inside. Will do. So I'm gonna go through this kind of fast. I'm gonna be really stopping on the uh, Yu-Gi-Oh pages. But we're mainly gonna be focused on the 50 Yu-Gi-Oh cards listed in this magazine and how expensive they are now. So once again, I will stop on the Yu-Gi-Oh pages. Obviously, these cards are all very, very, very cool. It goes over like just tons and tons and tons of cards and then you have just characters from the show. She's not drawn super well, uh, but this is like Yugi, you know, Pegasus is there, that's Joey. Taya is definitely not drawn the best right here, but I mean it's better than I can draw, so I mean I'm not bitching or anything. Uh, this is just pure nostalgia. We have Yugi, Pegasus, Joey, all these amazing old cards that it lists off here. Is that Kaiba smiling? He, he doesn't smile unless he's like talking shit to Yugi. Are you kidding? Like, Kaiba doesn't smile. That's inaccurate. That's inaccurate. Now, he smiles. Bakura smiles, okay, because he's evil. That's even an evil smile. There's jo What's Joey looking confident for? Joey sucks. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but this is just awesome. So much nostalgia. If you guys play GOAT format, um, I mean, you'll recognize the, you know, cards that are most played on this page or, you know, any of these pages for that matter. But, uh... This is just so killer. The mystery card, what's this? There's one more card coming, what could it be? Get ready for a little mystery. All of the English language Yu-Gi-Oh sets released so far have had one card that wasn't in the original Japanese set. Huh, for example, the Dark Magician Girl from Dark Magician's Force was not in the original Japanese sets and was actually culled from a minor set called the Premium Packs. Most of the additional cards added have been from those same Japanese Premium Packs. Some of the cards that could appear as the next mystery card if they haven't been already released by the time you read this could be the Crush card that Kaiba used in the animated series, which destroys your opponent's 1500 attack or higher monsters. The Curtain of Dark Magic which allows you to pay half of your life points to special summon a Dark Magician from your deck, or it could even be the Firewing Pegasus, an above average normal fire monster with an attack of 2250 for one attribute. Then again, Konami and Upper Deck could feature a card from a completely different source, throwing all of our assumptions out the window. But even back in the day, guys, even back in the day, this magazine's from like, what, 2004? 2004. 2004, yeah, this magazine's from 2004-ish. But um, that's that's so interesting. That's so cool, reading all this old stuff. You, that, that just proves you can find very old, um, you know, information and relevant information to, you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! history or history, you know, in general for that matter. And old magazines, you know, old pieces of uh, media. But, uh, you know, I'm going to kind of skip through these, stop on the Yu-Gi-Oh! pages. This is a Yu-Gi-Oh! channel, after all. But show me the money, the top 50 most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh! cards in the world. Um, according to, uh, yeah, Spring 2004. It says Spring 2004 right here down on the bottom. Wow, so interesting. There are some Yu-Gi-Oh cards that you'll only find if you're lucky enough to open the right booster pack. And then there are cards that you can only be lucky enough to get if you enter the right tournament or reserve the right game. And then there are really rare cards. We're talking about the ones where there are only one or two in the world. Cards you can only find in Japan or at only one tournament. These are the ultra super rare cards. <laughs> ultra super rare. Grandpa, will you show me your ultra super rare card? <laughs> That's like the first episode. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're going to give you a look into some jaw-dropping prices, along with boggling levels of rarity. Though we do try hard to do the best we can in reporting, the market for cards fluctuates rapidly, and prices can go up and down without notice. I'm going to use that um, to uh, do a disclaimer here. Since doing research for this video, some of these card prices might have changed. 
So if, if you look up one card price that I tell you out of this video and it's different, it changes. The price of any of these cards could have immediately changed right after me looking them up. So uh, disclaimer, some of these cards might not be 100% on the dollar, but they will get you in the right range of what they're worth. That was my goal. And I actually just noticed this over here. Um, in Yugi We Trust, it'll take a lot of real money to buy these cards, of course. Uh, some of the cards here are, are in that kind of bracket. And what you see here may not be reflected elsewhere without further ado <laughs> without further even the Yu-Gi-Oh magazine <laughs> so I saw that meme where it's like Yugi tubers saying without further ado and I'm like oh god I'm so glad I'm not one of those I might have done it in like two videos but they do it right here in the Yu-Gi-Oh magazine <laughs> here are some of the most expensive Yu-Gi-Oh cards that have been released you have been warned so uh, before I get into the top 50 let's uh, skip to the end and show the rest of the magazine really quick not to spoil anything, you know, just let's just go through the rest of the magazine just to show off, you know, so you guys can see it and you guys can, you know, pause on any of these pages that you're interested in, you know, from other animes, stuff like that. But yeah, it's just a really cool magazine. With that out of the way, let's start. Crush card, $20 from Japanese Duel Monsters 2. It wasn't a sure thing to get this promotional card from the Japanese Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy game. You got three of the ten cards that were featured in that game at random, like its animated series counterparts. It destroys your opponent's monsters of 1,500 or more attack, but only for three turns. It is an ultra rare, and the price I have for it is around $70. So, um, it is definitely appreciated in value. It goes for $20 in this magazine. That is a plus of 50 bucks. Not bad. Um, I will say some of these cards, after looking up the prices, have not appreciated that much in value and that some of them have actually gone down in value. Surprisingly enough, let's <laughs> no spoilers though. I'm not gonna tell you which ones, but let's keep trucking here. Dark Magician of Chaos. It goes for $20 here. The effect monster version of the Black Magician of Chaos it negates the effects of monsters it destroys as a result of battle. Plus, you can get a spell card back from your graveyard when you normal or special summon it. Ultra rare, and I have it going for $90 to $110. It looks like I have one eBay um, auction over here that has ended, that ended for about $96, and then another one that ended for just short of $110. So uh, we will just go, you know, that $95 to $110 range. So the median would be, you know, $95, $100. Once again, if I have any of these a little off, it's not my fault. Cards fluctuate so much. I'm doing my best here. Dark Magician's Knight um, from Japanese Duel Monsters 8. This promotional card for the Japanese Duel Monsters 8 Game Boy Advance game was only available by reserving the game at your favorite dealer. It has the, sta the same statistics as the Dark Magician, but requires title of a knight to special summon and destroys a card on the field when special summoned. Plus, it's a warrior type. And that is a secret rare. Believe it or not, guys, this card only goes for 10 bucks. Matter of fact, um, I have it eBay listing here uh, for reference that uh, the yeah, the auction ended at eight dollars and uh, there's buy it now is for about ten. So yeah, this card not really worth that much money. Very cool card nonetheless, but it has not uh, appreciated in value. It's actually gone down in value apparently. But Death Vorstigoff. $30 it's showing, Japanese Duel Monsters 5 promo. By reserving your copy of Duel Monsters 5 in Japan, you were sent this promotional card from Konami. It inflicts 500 damage on your opponent when it destroys monsters in battle. Plus, it boosts its own attack by 200 until the end of the turn when a normal quick place spell card is played. Secret rare, and that is actually going for about $30 from what I found. So, it has, eh, it's about, it's about the same. Uh, the, and, here's, and here's another thing I'm going to note, guys. You're going to be like, wow, that's only 30 bucks? How's that? Well, it's because um, American dollar is worth more than Japanese yen. So, when you buy cards from Japan, you see, yeah, you, you get it. So, uh, these cards can be, you know, on the cheaper side because they are Japanese. I mean, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a Yu-Gi-Oh card marketologist, okay? That's not what I went to Harvard for, but you get it. So, moving on here. Dunamis Dark Witch. There's actually not a picture of it here. There's actually a few cards that they didn't uh, picture, but um, that is number 46. It is a Japanese Duel Monsters 3 promo. This strong monster called uh, Dunamis of Valkyria in Japan could only be received if you reserved your copy of Duel Monsters 3, one of the few level 4 fairy monsters with an attack of 1800, at least, you know, at that time. Uh, secret rare, and that is only going for 15 bucks. So, you know, once again, 
these prices, whatever, you know, I did my best, uh, $15, so about half of what it was previously worth. But it's, it's sad, it's sad, but you know, at least you can pick it up cheap if you want it. That's the good news here. So Exodia the Forbidden One, English, Legend of Blue Eyes, White Dragon, one of those feared monsters in the game. <laughs> Exodia needs no real introduction. It even says it right there. I'm not gonna talk anymore. Um, number 45, Exodia the Forbidden One. I have a few eBay and TCG listings here, you know, but the median for Exodia the Forbidden One, first at all rare, you know, Legend of Blue Eyes, seems to be about 200 bucks. Black Luster Soldier Messenger of Creation goes for $30 here. Japanese uh, Controller of Chaos, this revamped version of the Black Luster Soldier can remove monsters on the field from the game or attack twice during a battle phase. It's also a special summon by removing a light and dark monster in your graveyard from the game. It comes in Ultra Rare, Parallel Rare, and Ultimate Rare versions. This would be the Ultimate Rare version, number 44. And the average for that one, I got once again, $200, more or less, is, is the average for one of those Black Luster Soldiers, give or take about 200 bucks. So it's definitely appreciated in value. Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon, $35, English Forbidden Memories promo. When the English Forbidden Memories PlayStation game was first released, it didn't contain any promotional cards. I actually did a video on this. Konami then did a very limited re-release of the game with three... Uh, pack in cards. This was one of the cards, which was the result of equipping a Metal Morph on the Mighty Red Eyes Black Dragon. Secret Rare Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon goes for 130 bucks on average. Roundabout, guys. I have um, a listing here for $125, and I have another one for um, just over $132 here. So uh, I just put it about 130 bucks. I'm not looking up every single listing out there, guys. I'm just going for medium, you know, the median here. Number 42, Black Pendant. Japanese World Ranking Promo. There are World Ranking Tournaments in Japan, much like the Upper Deck Tournament Centers in the United States. Or at least there were. <laughs> By winning in those uh, tournaments, you can get some rather interesting cards, such as rare or common cards from earlier sets in parallel formats. So this is a parallel version of the Black Pendant, and it went for $40 at this time. Yeah, that actually goes for an average of $3 now. How the mighty have fallen! Yeah, that card is only worth a few bucks, but it is a very cool uh, card nonetheless. That would be a max rarity for Black Pendant. So, I mean, I, unless I'm mistaken, that, that's uh, I don't know of any uh, higher rarity Black Pendant than this crazy parallel rare. But then again, I'm not an expert on a Black Pendant either. Mystical Space Typhoon of 40 bucks. Japanese World Ranking Promo. Like the Pendant, this card is a parallel rare version of the Mystical Space Typhoon known as Cyclone in Japan. And that Mystical Space Typhoon... Also, only about $3.50. Wow. Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, Japanese Duelist Legacy 5. This misprint of a card that was originally in the Japanese Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy game is in Ultimate Rare format and slightly difficult to find. Its value is based on its rarity, since even though it's a powerful monster, it's nearly impossible to summon correctly. What are you talking about? It's the most powerful monster in Yu-Gi-Oh! besides Larvae Moth. <laughs> but it, it was recently released as a promotional card in the English The Sacred Card Game Boy Advance game. Ultimate rare. Let's see how much this goes for. 75 bucks! $75. So if you uh, buy one of these, yeah, if you bought one of these for 40 bucks back in the day, yeah, it's worth more now. Good for you. You're perfectly ultimate, great, ultimate, you're perfectly ultimate, ultimate rare, great moth uh, went up in value. 39, Master of Dragon Knight. Still a popular monster in Japan and in the United States. This card comes with copies of Duel Monsters 6 for the Game Boy Advance, which was released under the name The Sacred Cards in the United States, though it can only be fusion summoned. Its 5,000 attack packs a huge wallop and gets even stronger with your other dragons that are on the field. Secret Rare, number 39, went for $40 back in the day still only goes for about 40 bucks now according to the ebay listings uh, that i was able to find Ooh, oof uh, uh, dang i was i was expecting that to actually I, have, I thought i remember that one going up in value but apparently not wow i mean it could be worse it could have gone down in value but let's keep trucking here it's a little disappointing nonetheless exodia the forbidden one. Oh, this one's gonna go up <laughs> exodia the forbidden one 40 bucks i'm not even gonna introduce exodia that like they said exodia needs no introduction so um exodia dds yeah that one goes for um an average of about 200 to 220 dollars the reason why that one varies 
is because DDS will vary a lot more on conditions similar to uh, DDS Blue Eyes and stuff like that. Uh, DDS cards came out of a game, you know, Dark Door Sto Stories game. They came, you know, as promo bundles and stuff. The um, the condition of the cards will vary a lot more out of uh, video game bundles than they will out of regular Yu-Gi-Oh packs. It seems like, but uh, yeah, I'm not once again not a uh, Yu-Gi-Oh packologist. Let's move on. And speaking of DDS Blue Eyes, that's actually what's next up on the list. 37 Blue Eyes White Dragon Dark Duel Stories promo. I don't even need to talk about Blue Eyes White Dragon. We already know that DDS Blue Eyes is worth a lot of money. The average, once again, it depends on condition, this, that, the other. Um, I went with a $500 average on uh, blue, the DDS Blue Eyes. They're, they're worth a lot of money. You can get them, you know, uh, obviously graded and have them, you know, PSA graded and have them worth more. Um, but, I mean, let's put it this way. Even like a beat to shit DDS Blue Eyes is going to be worth something because of... It's low availability, and uh, yeah, that's that's all it really comes down to. Uh, high demand, low availability, and it is max rarity for Blue Eyes White Dragon. So, Metal Zoa, Japanese Forbidden Memories promo. This card can only be found in the Japanese uh, Forbidden Memories PlayStation game, but if you were lucky, the secret rare has never been reprinted in Japan, but was recently released in English with the... False Bound Kingdom GameCube game, but Metal Zoa, I have a average of about $90 for, so uh, plus of 50 bucks, not too bad for a card that's not, you know, in high demand by any means. Um, I mean, even though, like, you would think that these cards would be in higher demand just because of how classic and nostalgic and old they are, but, you know, just whatever, you know, what do I know? Gay Guardian, $45 Japanese tournament promo to invite Duelists to the Tokyo Dome for the tournament showdown of the Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy game. This was one of the two cards sent to them. There's actually a lot of Tokyo Dome cards in this uh, in this magazine, by the way. I remember that when doing research for this video. It was later reprinted in Premium Pack 3 and in the English release of Metal Raiders. So, Ultra Rare Gate Guardian yeah, that's uh, over a hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, I put a hundred dollar average for that Gate Guardian, even though I saw some going for more. Um, and uh, yeah, it goes for forty five dollars in this magazine, so definitely a plus. Just no brainer. Old Gate Guardian. I mean, anything like that that comes from a tournament, guys. I mean, just think about how much a tournament pack cards and turbo pack cards are worth. I mean, look no. I mean, that's that's all I should have to give for an example. I mean, old Japanese tournament cards from the beginnings of Yu-Gi-Oh are going to be worth a lot of money too. But um, Sliper, the Sky Dragon, Japanese Duel Monsters 4 promo. When Duel Monsters 4 for the Game Boy game was released in Japan, there were three different versions available: the Yu-Gi version, the Kaiba version, and the Joey version. Depending on which you, one you pre-ordered, you got one of the three Egyptian God cards in it. These cards were in Japanese, and like all God cards, have no effect text on to it, so they cannot be played in games. Slifer came in the Yu-Gi version. Okay, the secret rare slifer uh, That's only about 50 bucks. So yeah, it's about the same as it. Yeah, it's about the same as the magazine about five dollars more Yeah, it is what it is. All right magician of black chaos Japanese tournament pro promo This was the second card that was sent to the entrance of the dual monsters 2 tournaments This card was also reprinted in premium pack 5 and uh, that uh, Magician of Black Chaos, number 33. See, I have it going from 40 to 100 bucks. Why is that? Oh, I see, because the only two on eBay, at least on the time of recording this, um, yeah, one is beat to shit and goes, is going for 40 bucks, and the other one is used but looks good and goes for 100. Yeah, I guess for this one, there's not like a third entry for me to try to get like a middle and tell you the range. Yeah, I guess it's gonna be one of those that depends on uh, condition once again. But yeah, I mean, 100 bucks, yeah, that makes sense. I mean, they, I mean, doubling in, in value when it's a card this old, that doesn't make sense. I mean, because it goes for 48 bucks here. So let's move on. Um, Five God Dragon. So this is a Japanese Duel Monsters 6 promo going head to head with the Dragon of uh, Master of Dragon Knight is the strongest monster in the game. This card was only available if you pre-ordered your copy of Duel Monsters 6. It's fused by any five dragons. Plus, it doesn't receive battle damage from non-light monsters. Secret rare. You guys are not going to believe this. It is only half. And I have a lot of references for this one. It's only half of its original value, apparently. is going for an average of about $25, that five-headed dragon. Oof. Oof. The mighty have fallen there. Obelisk the Tormentor. Obelisk the Tormentor. Japanese Duel Monsters 4 promo. I don't even need to announce the uh, the god cards. Obelisk is going for about $30. Ugh. Man, some of these... I'm serious, guys. Some of these are going to upset you. You're like, no way. I mean, these cards were... I wanted these when I was a kid. There's no way they're only... 
Well, if you feel that way, go buy them. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Wing Dragon of Raw going for $50 once again. Uh, I have it for about $20 average. Those are the listings that I found for it. Uh, the Mighty God cards. It, it saddens me to see them that way. But number 29, Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon from Japanese Forbidden Memories. The uh, Japanese release of the Forbidden Memories game on the PlayStation had this card as a hard to find secret rare. An alternate art version was reprinted in the Premium Pack 5 set and the original art was released in the very limited special re-release of the English version of Forbidden Memories. And that one, yo yeah. So this, this right here goes for $75. Yeah, the only two listings I found were for around 500 bucks. Yeah, this card has gone way up in value. <laughs> Red Eyes Black Metal Dragon, Forbidden Memories. Very, very cool card. Tri-Horn Dragon, Japanese Tournament Award for the Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy uh, uh, Tournament in the Tokyo Dome during 1999. Regardless of how well you did, you received this powerful card. There were approximately 30,000 uh, of this card printed. It was uh, reprinted in the Japanese Premium Pack 3 set and in the English edition of uh, Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon. 30,000 printed, $90 Tri-Horn Dragon. Dragon. Yeah, and it still goes for about 90 to to $100. So yeah, with that, I mean, it's not, let's put it this way. Did it say that there was only like five of them? No, it said there were 30,000 of them. That's why. <laughs> Morphing Jar, English Tournament Pack 2 for the second tournament pack. This card was the ultra rare with a simple flip effect. Each player discards his or her hand and draws five new cards. Ultra rare cards from the tournament packs were difficult to find, some only being found one in every 30 packs. So... Morphing Jar, they don't have a picture of it here. $100, so Tournament Pack 2, $100 Morphing Jar because of GOAT format. And, uh, and once again, because of how much um, Tournament cards are worth, the Tournament Pack cards are worth. Tournament Pack 2 Morphing Jar, I have going for about $1,100. On average, um, there's two listings. One is a little more beat up for still a thousand dollars almost, and um, a good condition one for about eleven hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a really expensive Yu-Gi-Oh card, guys. If you have one, good for you. Um, number twenty-six, Needleworm, hundred dollars. English tournament pack three. This insect was the sole ultra rare in the third American tournament pack set. You could receive tournament packs by playing at official upper deck Yu-Gi-Oh tournament locations. Its flip effect sends the top five cards of your opponent's deck into his or her graveyard. That Needleworm goes for about two. 250 bucks yeah that's a hundred dollar card back in the day it has gone up in value it's yeah it's over doubled in value and number 25 the last one for this page and halfway points for the list mechanical chaser tournament pack one this lone ultra rare was located in the first tournament pack set it was highly sought after due to its rarity and attack Hi for a level four monster. We'll, we'll just stop there. You guys know what Mechanical Chaser is, and if you don't, long story short, La Jin and other monsters were 1800. He's 1850. That's what made him good. So uh, he went for $100 back in the day. Goes for about $200 on average now. Over $200 on average now. So if you have one, Good for you, man. Really, really cool card. 24, Sayaru, Japanese Duel Monsters 2 promo. When you purchased the earlier Japanese Duel Monsters Game Boy games from Konami, there was always a pool of promos for that game, and you only received three random cards from that pool. There was no different. This was no different for Duel Monsters 2. Out of the ten cards that you could receive, this was one of them. It's a secret rare, and it was difficult to obtain. It hasn't been reprinted in Japan, but was released in English in, in the Game Boy Color game Dark Duel Stories. So, Japanese Duel Monsters 2 Sayaru goes for about 1500 bucks. It had a 5% pull rate. Um, that information, the price information, and a lot of other information I got for this video, um, I used, uh, let's put it this way, I used um, Papa Frank God as a source, his high print run price guide um, from ProBoards.com, and I used that because he has a lot of uh, a lot of the cards that I couldn't find otherwise. He has the last known sold um, you know, information for uh, for those cards in, his, in that blog, so it was really useful to make this video, so shout out to, to that blog. Another thing to note is uh, a lot of these cards are very hard to find because there's no numbers on them. They, I mean, even in the pictures, do you see numbers on these and stuff? No. Uh, they really don't have numbers in Japan. Like The old cards didn't. A lot of them didn't. So it was very hard to find a lot of these cards. So yeah, shout out to those guys for making that. But moving on, Dark Magician Girl, Japanese Tournament Award for the one-time only street duel, Legend of the Power Tournament that Konami held in Japan from July to August 2000. Duelists used the Duel Monsters 3 Game Boy game as their arena. Many entrants received this card, which was a rare version of the Dark Magician Girl. This was the first 
time that the card was printed. A super rare Dark Magician Girl was later reprinted in the small premium pack four sets and then later with different pictures in other bundles. So a rare Dark Magician Girl tournament award card. 3,500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I found one eBay listing. I didn't have to use a price guide for this one. I actually found one eBay listing for 3500 bucks. Let's just go with that. <laughs> That's going to be the value of that card. Entrance cards, $200 as a set to Japanese tournament promos. These three cards were sent to prospective entrance of the Japanese National Duel Monsters tournament in 1999, along with two star chips. It was supposed to invite the contenders to the tournament, much like how Pegasus invited Yugi to the Duelist Kingdom in the m manga and animated series. They are not legal for tournament play since they have no effects and no way to play them. These three cards were reprinted printed in the first Pegasus structure deck in Japan. I actually have a set of these. Um, I actually have the ones that, that were reprinted in the Pegasus structure deck that it's talking about. So those are still really cool. I don't have the originals, okay? But the original Duelist Kingdom set that it's talking about from this tournament, I don't know how much the star chips are worth, okay? I couldn't find any star chips, seriously. But um, they're about $500 each. Yeah, about 500 bucks each. So 21 is actually pretty interesting. Japanese special prize, English black magician. Uh, during 2001, Shuashia, Shusha, whoever that is, who publishes the Japanese version of Shun and Jump, had a mail-in contest to be able to win one of two special cards. This was one of them, an English card named the Black Magician, which is the actual name of the Dark Magician card in Japan. If you'll notice, it was given out before the game made its way to American shores. It's a very interesting looking card. You know, obviously, it's not called a Black Magician over here in the States uh, to this day. And, um... Uh, yeah, it looks like that is about twenty two to twenty five hundred dollars Jeez, and I was like, you know what? I don't think that's right. I actually think it's worth more I literally clicked the link that I have in my document here with all the prices for reference um, Yeah, this listing is going for six thousand dollars now same listing so the um, English black magician I don't even know how much it's worth. Uh, good luck appraising that one. Uh, like, I mean, I will show it on screen right now. eBay listing, 6,000 bucks, but I'm serious. Like, I saw another listing of this same card for $2,500, or I wouldn't have wrote it down, so. Figure it out, guys, figure it out, because I've tried. <laughs> English Blue Eyes White Dragon goes for $230, Japanese special prize. This was the second English promotional card give out, given out like Black Magician above. Yeah, this one was worth a lot too. The um, Blue Eyes White Dragon, the last sold price. So here's the thing. This card is going right now as I'm making this video. The Black Magician's going for $6,000 right now as a buy it now on eBay at the time of recording this video, okay? There's a Black Magician. The price guide that I mentioned earlier that I'm using for reference for this video, a lot of, uh, I'm using for a lot of reference for this video, shows uh, the last sold Blue Eyes White Dragon as the publicly sold price um, is $5,500. So since the uh, price guide has it for $5,500 bucks, and uh, I mean the last one's going for six grand when I really saw it for going for $2,500, use that $5,500 as a tentative price. It's probably going for more like $7,000 right now or something like that. The other one went up in price or has changed in price for whatever reason uh the blue eyes white dragon is going to change the price too because it's worth more it is worth more apparently and the blue eyes white dragons even listed higher than the uh english black magician in this magazine so yeah the uh the blue eyes white dragon is probably worth more money um once again the last publicly sold price that i can the, according to this i haven't i just ebayed i can't find one but the last publicly sold price according to the price guide that i quoted you know i keep quoting is uh, fifty five hundred dollars but since the black magician's going for an active listing right now of six thousand dollars um yeah it's the the blue eyes is worth more money most likely probably like seven thousand dollars or sixty five hundred bucks let's put it that way number 19 special starter box japanese starter set special edition though the original starter box for the Yu-Gi-Oh official card game was released in japan in the middle of uh, march 1999 there was a special release of the starter box two weeks early in an anime fair the special release contained five monsters that were not found in the standard release. Aqua Mador, Trial of Nightmare, 13th Grave, Dark King of the Abyss, and Turtle Tiger. These five cards were later reprinted in the Legend of Blue Eyes White Dragon set. And those cards, <laughs> yeah. So once again, I'm using that price guide, but uh, Aqua Mador, last publicly sold price, $250. Same for Trial of Nightmare, 13th Grave, 
Dark King of the Abyss, and Turtle Tiger. So all of them, according to this guide, take it with a grain of salt, have a publicly sold price of apparently the cost of the whole box itself because I think this is going for the price of the box at the time being $250 for the set and each card from that set sells for about $250 each. So that does make sense. That does make sense, but uh, it also seems like the cards could be worth more now. Let's just keep trucking though. Number 18, Perfectly Ultimate Great Moth, the Japanese Duel Monsters 2 promo. This card was the second of two secret rare cards that you could find in the Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy game. It wasn't reprinted for four years when it was finally released as an ultimate rare in the Duelist Legacy 5 reprint set, dropping the value of this card. In addition, the English version of the card was released in the Sacred Card Game Boy Advance game. So, um, secret rare perfectly ultimate great moth we got another ultimate great moth on here somehow I don't know how but perfectly ultimate great moth according to this guide last publicly sold price about $800 so he's still you know plus 500 for a moth <laughs> really 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 good next number 17 Aquamador Japanese tournament promo this card was given out to all the entrants of the Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy tournament in Japan as an ultra secret rare format there were about 4,000 cards that were distributed ultra secret rare huh that ultra secret rare ultra Medora is going for at least eighteen hundred dollars Chinese dark magician number 16 as a special present for reader readers of the weekly Japanese manga anthology Shannon jump there was a mail-in offer to be entered in a drawing to win one of two Chinese Yu-Gi-Oh cards not those fake Chinese cards you could buy at swap meets but authentic authentic Chinese cards this ultra rare dark magician was one of them and entirely in Chinese about 1,000 were printed that bad boy yeah, that goes for about $1,500 bare minimum. So yeah, um, that's the publicly sold price. The last publicly sold price according to this guide, um, and I can't find one on eBay, so let's just go with about $1,500 minimum for that card. I didn't spend hours and hours on each and every card in this list, guys. I really didn't. I'm sorry. Um, I just wanted to kind of get everybody more in the ballpark of what these cards are worth compared to what they're worth in this magazine. They're worth exponentially more, at least most of them. Um, the, the cards earlier in the countdown, some of them not so much, sadly, but most of these cards, by and large, worth a lot more money. Blue Eyes, White Dragon, Japanese. Any special prize every year Yu-Gi-Oh! manga publisher Shusha, Sh I can't, Shuisha, <laughs> holds a convention called the Jump Festa where there are number, where there are a number of different activities concerning the stories that appear in Shonen Jump. For the Jump Festa in 1999, you could get your hands on this special Blue Eyes by playing in a tournament there. And that Blue Eyes is worth about $9,000. Oh yeah. Actually, if you guys know uh, Kisame Unlimited from, uh, from YouTube, um, you know, from uh, the underground members, I don't know if they're still around but if they are I think he had one of these I, I'm really I'm pretty sure he had one of this blue eyes that I'm talking about right now but don't quote me on that um, next up uh, Chinese blue eyes white dragon the second prize that you could receive in the Shonen Jump mail-in offer it's the second of only two official Chinese cards produced this ultra rare was reprinted in the first Kaiba structure deck in Japan as a common card about 1,000 were printed ultra rare Chinese blue eyes white dragon about $3,500 once again uh, the last publicly sold price. Sengenjin was a Japanese tournament award during the 1999 Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy tournament. If you got a respectable distance in the tournament and were defeated, you got were given this card. There were approximately a thousand of them given out, later reprinted in Premium Pack 3. That goes for about $4,500, $400 to $3,500, and then uh, this uh, $400 to about $9,000. Wow, that is way cool, guys. Serpent Knight Dragon. During the 1999 Duel of the Monsters 2 Game Boy Tournament, if you got rather far in the tournament but lost, you were given this card. It's estimated that there were about 125 of them in circulation. It was reprinted in Premium Pack 3 and in the English Metal Raider set. So, Serpent Knight Dragon. I don't remember it being that much, but the last publicly sold price that I have down is $20,000. So $800 to 20 grand, boys. And here's a picture of it on the uh, previous page, guys. That's, that's insane, Serpent Knight Dragon. I, did, I never would have thought that that was going for freaking 20 grand. That's a cool card though, classic card. Kanan, uh, the Sword Mistress, Japanese tournament promo. 
Those who attended or played in the February 1999 Duel Monsters 1 Game Boy Tournament received one of a reported 400 copies of this card. It's never been reprinted except for an English version that was given out during a qualifier to play in the World Tournament in Madison Square Garden in August of 2003. That Kanan the Sword Mistress goes for about $6,500. So it went for $1,800 in this magazine. The last publicly sold price, according to the guide, is $6,500. Number 10, Dark Magician Girl. Once again, you weebs. <laughs> so $2,000, $2,000. Japanese Tournament Award, so 2,000 back in the day. Much like the rare version of the Dark Magician Girl mentioned earlier in this article, this card was received during the Legend of Power Tournament. However, this particular card was given to high-ranking players upon completion of the tournament. It's in the secret rare format and there is an estimated to be only around 400 in circulation. Estimated to be 400 in circulation. That Dark Magician Girl, it's got to be worth more than that. See, that's why I'm starting to question this price guide because this price guide has that Dark Magician Girl going for $12,000. Um, it is listed for two grand here. I feel like that would have appreciated more in value, but I'm going to have to go with the guide, guys, because like a lot of these cards, I try to find active eBay listings for them to see if anybody's selling them right now, you know, but uh, there's there's not any, and uh, these cards are really hard to search for on eBay, too, because once again, there's no numbers, and I had to search for a lot of these in certain ways for this video. I did my best, guys. Did my best for, you know, how long I wanted to spend on the video. Let's put it that way. Fiend's Mirror, Japanese Tournament Award. This non-ritual version of the Fiend's Mirror was given to the top top four finalists of the Duel Monsters 1 Game Boy Tournament in Japan during 1999. There are only four in the world. Yeah, only four in the world, according to this magazine, okay? Number nine, Fiend's Mirror, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. 350 grand. So $3,000 to another big number that starts with a three. Excellent. Number eight, Firewing Pegasus. This card closed in an award, was given to each of the top three winners of a Game Boy and card game tournament in September of 1999. Um, this means that there were a total of six out there in Japan. This card was later reprinted in Premium Pack 3. I accidentally spit it in this magazine and I didn't mean to, but uh, Firewing Pegasus, yeah, about 120 grand. V Jump Yu Gi Oh! Premium Cards, Japanese Special Prize. In June of 1999, the Japanese video game magazine V Jump had a contest for one of two special presents. This was one of them a sealed plaque with three special cards in them Turtle Tiger, Celtic Guardian, and Dark King of the Abyss, all in an ultra rare or secret uh, rare hologram format. Only 51 sets were ever produced. One of them for Konami archi Archives and 50 given out to luck winners with serial numbers. According to this magazine, the set went for about $3,000 for the whole set, okay? Turtle Tiger, last sold price, 4,500 bucks. Celtic Guardian, last sold price, 6,500 bucks. And then Dark King of the Abyss, 4,500 bucks, last sold price. So yeah, worth a lot more money. <laughs> worth a, each card is worth more than the, yeah, the original cost of the whole set or you know what this magazine set says the whole set's worth. Number six, more uh, premium cards. This was the other special present. Like the other set, this one had three special cards in it. Trial of Nightmare, Kane and the Sword, Mistress, and 13th Grave. They are also ultra secret rares and only 51 sets produced. So, this says, <laughs> um, yeah, so $3,500 for the whole set. Um, that Trial of Nightmare is $4,500. The Cane and the Sword Mistress, $9,500. And uh, 13th Grave, 4,500 bucks. So yeah, each worth more than the price of the entire set. So Super War Lion. This non-ritual version, non-ritual version of Super War Lion was given to the top three winners of the Duel Monsters 1 Game Boy Tournament back in 1999. It's not tournament legal and in, is inside an award. There are only three in the world. Three in the world. Super War Lion, $5,000 in the magazine. 400 grand according to the price guide. Woo, lad. <laughs> yeah, I figured it was going to be a lot. So, yeah, three in the world. Anything that says that, guys, it's going to be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars like every time. Zero the Mant, a Japanese tournament award. This non-ritual version of, of Zero the Mant was given to the top two winners of the Duel Monsters 1 Game Boy game. Yeah, sorry, Game Boy Tournament back in 1999. It's not tournament legal, and it's, it's inside of an award. There are only two in the world. Zero the Mant, two in the world. 680 grand, $8,000 to $680,000. 
insane. Number three, Meteor Black Dragon, going for $10,000 out of this magazine, Japanese Tournament Award. During the 1999 September uh, Tokyo Dome Tournament, this card was given out to the top two players in the Game Boy Tournament and Card Game Tournament. This means that there are only four in the world, and they're inside of an award that was given to those contenders. This card was reprinted later in uh, later dates in Premium Pack 3. That goes for, yeah, $300,000. <laughs> $300,000. Because there's four of them. Insane. Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon 2. That's how many of this card are in the world. That's what, what it says right here, too. That's how many of this card are in the world. These two were given out to the top finishers of the Duel Monsters 2 Game Boy Tournament and the Duel Monsters Official Card Game Tournament held in Japan in the Tokyo Dome in September of 1999. This secret rare card is encased in an award which makes playing this card very difficult. This card was later reprinted in the Premium Pack 3 set. Plus was also included in the original Kaiba Structure Deck in Japan. Secret rare. <laughs> yeah, guys. Bare minimum, $650,000. And uh, yeah, it's probably worth more than that because there's only two, but yeah, just no, almost a million dollars for Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon. There is a Blue Eyes Ultimate Dragon for almost a million dollars out there. Seto Kaiba would be very proud, and Yugi would be very proud of this next one. Black Luster Soldier. You guys might, might have seen this one before, you know, from another YouTube video or something, because this card has been, you know, talked about before. Don't get this card confused with the more readily available Japanese Black Luster Soldier. This card is the pinnacle of insanely rare cards. This And this is, still to this day, the most rare Yu-Gi-Oh card in the world. This Ultra Rare was given to the winner of the Duel Monsters 1 Game Boy Tournament in Japan. Toward the end of February of 1999, it's a non-ritual version of the Black Luster Soldier. There's only one in the entire world. It's also not tournament legal. Even if you wanted to use it in a tournament, signs have pointed that the card was auctioned off in Japan and it swept in over $20,000. How's that for pocket change? So it sold, according to this magazine, for 20 grand at one point in the past, but 1.5 million dollars. 1.5 million dollars for this Black Luster Soldier. What's really interesting though is this price guide says that the card was never sold but got a hundred thousand dollar rejected offer or whatever so I based the price on the statement but this says that in Japan it was auctioned off at one point for about 20 grand but signs have pointed. It doesn't say that it was. It says signs have pointed so maybe it wasn't ever sold but that is still very interesting nonetheless. And now you guys know that in two 2005, this Black Luster Soldier was worth $20,000 and is worth over a million now. $1.5 million for a Yu-Gi-Oh card, guys. I never would have thought when I was a kid that there would be a million dollar Yu-Gi-Oh card. And if there was any of those, when I was a kid, I would have thought it would have been like the Winged Dragon of Raw or something, you know, like because I was a big fan of the show when I was a kid. But I never in a million years would have thought that there was going to be a Black Luster Soldier for over a million bucks. A million years for a million dollars, I guess. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this gives you some more insight into what your cards are worth or, you know, at least what old Japanese Japanese Yu-Gi-Oh cards and tournament cards are worth. If you guys are interested in seeing any of my other old uh, Yu-Gi-Oh magazines, I would be happy to make those videos for you. Just let me know down in the comment section. And if you have any of these cards, mail them to me so I can be rich. <laughs>